It's that time of the expansion cycle again. It's time to talk about the top five decks that are currently polluting, uh, populating the Hearthstone ladder. Depends on how exactly you're looking at the meta right now because, well, Demon Hunter is still on top. Uh, it is, it is, it has gone down. It was almost at like a 59% uh, or almost like a 58% a couple of days ago, but its numbers are going down. However, the number is not going down fast enough. And I'm very, very concerned about how the meta is centered around Demon Hunter right now, because as, as you can see, the global win rates of classes, we got Warrior, Death Knight, Warlock, Hunter, and Demon Hunter, which are all decks that are going to be showcased in this video coming up ahead. But I want to point out this massive indifference between number four five and number six we are seeing right now in hearthstone a very make it or break it mentality to where some classes are just going to perform very good because they are either good by themselves or counter the decks that are most popular while all the other archetypes are not really doing that well right now like paladin for example paladin was almost in the spot that demon hunter was in where it was sitting at around like a 57 almost like a 60 percent win rate but since the nerfs the paladin have hit and i'll go ahead and spoil it there are no paladin uh, decks coming up in this video uh paladin's kind of in a bad spot right now and i think maybe we hit this deck a little bit too hard if you want my honest opinion tiger's plushy maybe shouldn't have been nerfed whatsoever i like the idea of hitting the deputization aura and the wind fury uh but also hitting the the, the plushy kind of hit other decks but regardless that's enough about paladin just might as well use this opportunity to talk about it because what exactly are the good decks as of right now these are the stats that we are seeing diamond through legend aggro chopper demon hunter is sitting at almost a 60 percent according to hs replay stats spell token hunter is sitting at the top of tier one but here's the thing about spell token hunter this deck gets significantly worse as you climb throughout the ladder and we'll take a look at, uh, at that here in a second but throughout the throughout the rest of the uh, of the meta we're seeing uh more demon hunters wheel warlock is surviving zarimi priest is doing very well at these ranks sludge warlock is making a comeback and has made a uh, uh, an appearance in this video mech rogue is starting to be solidified now with a new scam deck and rainbow dk is still ruling the dk archetypes uh at least through diamond through legend but the big question is how exactly does this change when we look at the top legend stats because well they're kind of drastic changes in all honesty like burn shaman is coming out of nowhere as like the best deck in the game and we still need a couple of days to figure this out if, if we click on this the the decks are not going to pop up because this is still very new data that is coming in and we'll talk about what's going on with shaman when we talk about the vicious syndicate article coming up here uh but yeah shopper demon hunters are still here control warriors are becoming really good highlander warriors becoming the the most popular warrior deck in order to beat up on the demon hunters zarimi priest is still there but held back by a couple of different options mech rogue is still surviving with the zilliac scam wheel warlock is barely holding on to itself as well as spell token hunter just becomes completely unwinnable at top legend i'm actually very surprised to see this deck have a 50 percent probably because it's beating up on unoptimized archetypes but before we get into the decks i want to take a look at, at two other websites when it comes to hearthstone meta so that way you guys can try to maximize your best chances of finding the best deck and this is also how you can kind of see the differences between other data websites to see if decks really are a problem right now because in diamond through legend shopper demon hunter is sitting at a 60 percent on donkey ranks which is absolutely crazy by the way a deck having 60 percent it, it it's it's gonna get nerfed at some point right like i just i really don't know if we want this deck to get nerfed in terms of like we're just gonna have a new boogeyman but it's like i really don't know what else to do but i'm not here to talk about nerfs i'm here to talk about what's good right now and what's good is demon hunter demon hunter is sitting on top of the ladder right now because of the weapon plus shopper package then you have wheel warlock sludge warlock zarini priest highlander demon hunter uh, highlander dk the freaking what what no idea what's going on there odin warrior still surviving cycle odin warrior still alive so there's a lot of archetypes that you can see on the donkey website and we can kind of get an idea of how these decks are thriving in this type of uh in, in this type of meta because not only do we get to see the win rate we get to see how many games are being played and well that is almost a quarter of a million games of demon hunter that's a lot of Demon Hunter, Blizzard. I, I don't know. Demon Hunter might become a problem. But if we look at Top Legend, the options go down drastically, not to mention the green goes down because the only green is still Shopper Demon Hunter. Highlander Warrior, a way to be able to, de uh, to defeat this. And it's actually becoming more prevalent on the ladder than Shopper Demon Hunter. And I think I think this might just be a recent... Uh, 
a recent phenomenon because I'm still seeing a lot of Demon Hunter, but Warriors are becoming more popular, at least on my grind at Top Legend. So that's what's going on in terms of the stats. And if you want even more decks, Vicious Syndicate just put out an article yesterday talking about all the decks that are possibly played. And well, Top 1000 Legend is very much populated by Demon Hunter. This was all just a fancy way of being able to show you guys three different data websites that all come to the same conclusion. Shopper Demon Hunter, absolutely crazy. Probably needs a nerf either to the stats of the demon or to the stats of the weapon. I really don't know the best way of doing it because I try not to play this deck because I don't roll mag. So I think this deck sucks, but when you when your opponent always rolls mag, this deck just, just tends to perform. But regardless, there are still a lot of decks that are seeing play. Vicious Syndicate has this entire article talking about what they believe are good. But one thing that I want to point out is that I believe they are wrong about Shaman. Because Shaman has had some decks that have emerged in the past couple of days. And when they were grabbing uh, information for this article they put out yesterday... Uh, they did not have the Shaman numbers. So this is the moment that I wanted to utilize to say that these websites are not always 100% accurate on the day that they are released. They are accurate based off of the past couple of days that we've seen, but there are actual changes that are emerging. And now that I've, get, I've gotten out all this information, let's go ahead and get into what I believe are the top five decks to be playing, not only to get Legend and stay Legend, but I've also got some fun decks in the mix. So that way, if you guys aren't trying to worry about your rank, then you still have some fun decks that you can utilize in this video. And starting things off, uh, well, I don't want to say right because I hate how good this deck feels and it doesn't feel right playing it, but Shopper Demon Hunter is the best deck in the game, and this may not be the perfect 30. This is just the list that I've been seeing the most, but the funny thing about this deck is that the legendaries keep changing around whenever I look at this deck. Like, for example, you could be running Kane in place of Pazic or in, Ka uh, in place of Metamorphosis, for example. But really, I just think this depends on what exactly you're seeing most uh, most often on your grind. And the reason why I like Pazic is because it works very well, in particular, with Through Fell and Flames. So that way, you have actual chances of being able to kill the mech, uh, or kill the Pazic, get the mechs, and then you are still on the board. But if you want that gambit where it's like, I'm gonna leave this on the board, you have to deal with it, there might be that chance to where this is just a good sticky egg-like minion, where it just gives you more stats after it dies. Ball Hog, originally I thought was a card that was not very good in this deck, but Lifesteal is just a very powerful keyword. And the fact that this minion can essentially deal nine damage, like three because you attack into it, three because of the battle cry, and three because of the death rattle, that is just nine healing. Like, that's just a really good card. And Ball Hog is honestly a card I maybe would be complaining about if the rest of the deck didn't feel so freaking good. Like, Desperados are just there for damage. This is really good in combination with Burning Heart for, like, a gigantic burst combo. Uh, Team of the Spirit is a really good card to help you just get some more attack on your Umpire's Grasp. It's very good in the mirror in order to help you deal with the Window Shopper. And, of, the, of course, the Shopper with all the demons, yada, yada, yada. Let's take a look at all the demons. Oh, man, there's not that many. But you want to know the only demon that really matters? It's mag mag's the only really card that really matters in this matchup unless you're rolling a really good Eldari inquisitor but even that's not 100 percent true because there are times where you can find this for three damage you can find this to return a minion this is obviously bad this can be somewhat decent but there are actually a lot of pretty decent demons that are good to discover even finding this off of the six five there's a lot of good demons that are in the pool but by far mag is the card that pushes this deck over the edge and maybe they change this to only dealing two but the biggest issue that I have with Mag is that we are nerfing Mag solely for Shopper Demon Hunter, and we're not going to be nerfing it for the decks that actually want to hard run this card. I have this card golden, and I can't even utilize it. I'm very upset. Blizzard, please don't nerf Mag. Nerf the other cards. The other cards are the problem, in my opinion. The Shopper maybe needs to go to six. Again, I didn't want to use this to talk about nerfs, but it's like you kind of have to when you talk about this deck because it just feels like it has everything. And the only real way of being able to beat this deck is to completely tech your deck around it. Like, that's the thing that kind of sucks about these top decks is that they are beatable, but you have to put everything into beating them. And even then, you are still going to fall short because I swear to God, they always have the weapon on three, even if they play instrument tech or not this is just one of those decks that is just so consistent even without this tech card that that's the main problem with this deck is the fact that weapon always gets drawn by turn three so if that always happens this game is just going to be very very uh curated and linear and i just don't like what this deck provides to the hearthstone meta but regardless this is the best deck to be playing right now if you want the quickest ranks and the easiest legend grind Next up is the other way that you can play Shopper Demon Hunter if you are intrigued with the Highlander cards and really want a, a reason to use your signature Gunslinger Kurtris. It's the only reason I played this deck. And honestly, this does feel like a, 
a cooler version of Shopper Demon Hunter because you have other options in the deck, such as the Kurtress, such as Vi uh, Dirty Riding an opponent or playing like Celestial Projectionist. This is a very weird list that honestly, I'm not sure if I would 100% recommend, but this is the Highlander Demon Hunter that has the best win rate uh, in about 150, almost 200 games at Top Legend on Gonki. So that is the reason why I'm suggesting this deck. And that is another reason why I also linked the Vicious Syndicate deck to where if cards like Mechanome don't look good to you, if cards like Sheriff Barrel Rim seem like they're completely bait, then you do have another deck that you can uh, take a look at and see if you like the other option better. But this is the deck that I saw on Donkey. That's why I'm reporting on it. I do believe this deck has a lot of very weird inclusions like the Barim like the gnome but you have ignis in the deck in order to have forge uh, uh situation so that seems pretty good greedy partner also seems like a card that doesn't particularly seem that good in this deck because you don't want to keep this card in the mulligan uh you want your you want your umpire grasp but you want your instrument tech this just feels like another way of maybe getting reno out sooner which honestly i feel like this card should just be the naga in that case but uh the the wayward sage is probably still not that good as a uh, as a replacement for this deck because it's just another card you don't want to keep in the mulligan, and most of the time this card's probably going to uh, get in the way of other cards you want to pop off. But regardless, uh, if you have another Highlander Demon Hunter you want to look at, check out the Vicious Syndicate deck. But odds are this deck is most certainly getting nerfed because of Umpire's Grasp and because of the Shopper. And the reason why we have duplicates of this card is because we can tutor them out extremely easily. We don't even care about uh, about having these duplicates in the deck. It makes Highlander Demon Hunter that much more consistent. So now that we've talked about Demon Hunter, what is the way that we absolutely counter it? It couldn't be Warrior, right? It, it, it's Warrior. It's always Warrior. Warrior has put itself in a very weird position because it's just the class that is always going to be the counter to whatever the best de the best tempo deck is. Like it just it really makes me annoyed and I have like a theory that I want to I want to showcase uh while talking about this deck, but I believe that Warrior cards have just been so overtuned, so massively buffed, that of course Highlander uh, Highlander uh, Warrior actually is good right now, because this is just Control Warrior. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and change my opinion on Deep Miner Brand. I still believe this card is absolutely garbage. I hate the fact that this card is actually seeing meta play, and the only reason why this card gets to see meta relevant play is because Warrior cards are just so good by themselves. Having a brawl that automatically wins being able to delete cards from your opponent's deck now having a legitimate win condition with the zilliax now these are your your top end these cards haven't been buffed recently but when you look at the cards that have been buffed you have cards like the shield block that are very very good you have blade storm that absolutely carry bash is still very good slam is still extremely good like the the deck has been changed as time goes on but the quality of cards for warrior is just so high since they've been overcorrecting with warrior to where bellowing flames is three mana deal 10 that's absolutely insane gain six armor while excavating a treasure doesn't seem that good but then when you look at all the other armor cards that are available in this deck it just seems that Warrior never dies, and the biggest issue that I have with Highlander Warrior is that a deck like this should not be good. And why shouldn't it be good? Because its consistency is all over the place. But the biggest problem with this deck is that you can just keep surviving, gaining armor, playing Bran on turn 6 every single time, because you're not going to die going into the next turn, and that allows this ridiculous, uh, this ridiculous comeback to be playable. So, like, if you want to play a Highlander deck that is very good, Highlander Warrior is definitely the best right now but the fact that Bran actually sees competitive play is ridiculous in my opinion not because Bran himself is powerful or the battle cries are powerful but just because warrior cards are so good that you can buy time you can build up these win conditions that in other classes would have no chance of being built but in all honesty the only thing carrying a warrior right now it's armor Armor is able to keep it uh, is able to help it survive to build these greedy win conditions and actually pop off with them. So yeah, Highlander Warrior is the deck that I don't feel like should be that good, but is a massive powerhouse right now. And I hate to eat my words, but if you don't want to play this deck, there are other options for Warrior. But I hate to admit it, some of them are probably not going to be as consistent. Jessicar Warrior is actually a deck that I would recommend if you're not trying to play Highlander Warrior. But again, dude, it's just another deck that plays Bran. We're gaining armor. We're denying our opponent. That's just what Warrior's bread and butter is right now. It's just deny, deny, deny until the very end, even with cards like Boom Boss. Like, I'm starting to get really annoyed of a card like this. Because this gives Warrior a, an, a legitimate win condition of just denying the entire time, even to the point where I'm going to dirty rat the cards in your deck. 
That's what this card feels like. It, it's it's dirty rat, but for the cards in your deck, and you, you don't bring them out to the field, but you destroy them. But this card is just absolutely powerful and has become the new way of being able to play Warrior now that Odin is 9 mana. And the 9 mana nerf really did make a huge difference to this deck, not because, uh, you know, you're slowing it down, you're always playing on a turn 9, but now you don't have the possibility of playing Odin on turn 8 into, like, a razor scale uh, or sorry into the pig into verse riff and then having all this value you could still otk or not otk but you could still do a, a large burst combo with odin depending on what happens so him going to nine mana really is a big difference if you guys have not actually thought about it to the point where this deck is now the new way of being able to play warrior and we can play justicar the only deck that can play justicar so far it's really really sad this card got buffed but has no real way of actually seeing meta relevant play the rest of the deck is pretty obvious though but there are some single inclusions in order to make the brand a little bit more consistent you are not going to play brand on turn six every single time with this kind of deck that is not what it is trying to do you are trying to play the brand after you've controlled your opponent by gaining armor, and this is exactly the point that I'm talking about. Warrior is the denial class right now, and it has legitimate win conditions to where as long as it gains armor, draws cards, and removes boards, which it can do very, very well. It's all attributes of Warrior that are very good. So it's just very frustrating that it feels like Warrior is going to be on top because the cards in this deck are just super high quality for any warrior deck because they literally fit into every single warrior archetype. What are we supposed to do? They're all good cards for any warrior deck. Next up actually might be the counter to warrior, which is why this deck is starting to resurface. And the reason why it could be a legitimate counter is because of Doom King. Respect the king. Keep this card in your mulligan. It's very good to keep against warriors. This is probably going to be like the best version of this deck. And I have play tested this a little bit myself. But the reason that I really like Endgame is because of its synergy, specifically with Dark Alley Pack. Dark Alley Pack summons a demon, and uh, you could play the same demon for two mana. And the reason why this is very good is because if you play Dark Alley Pack on turn four and your opponent clears it, now you have the synergy of Endgame into the, uh, the Forge of Wills on the exact same turn. So that way you could summon two big minions. That is one synergy that I am very much a fan of. However, I might need someone to confirm this interaction for me because Sarg is also technically a demon and I think that the way that they change his card is that instead of him looking at the portal that he specifically summoned he just scans your side of the board and then if there's a portal he activates the ability now I might be wrong maybe playing endgame on Sarg doesn't actually affect the portal but if that is a synergy that works and I'm 100% sold on endgame being good in this deck just because it works extremely well with dark alley pact and gives us legitimate curves However, maybe we put this to a one of two can be a little bit clunky in the deck, but with how much we're trying to draw, how much we're just trying to actually have good playable plays, this might be a decent card that just finds its way in here because we have plenty of other ways of being able to stall and heal up with cards like Glacial Shard, specifically for all of the weapon decks that we're seeing. We have Drain Soul, Mortal Eradication, specifically Popgar on the deck for extra bits of healing because I feel like this deck really needs the healing and needs the sustain. You just need every reason to play the wheel as soon as you can. And let's be honest, you're not always going to have your Reno. You're not always going to have the Sarg. You're going to have to go for these less than optimal wheel plays. And sometimes you just need a little bit more healing in order to make up for that. But the real card that carries this deck post wheel is Harp. Harp essentially prevents three of the four fatigues that you will be t uh, taking while playing this deck. Uh, so yeah, the harp is just really, really good because it's pretty much four turns, not five, because you're only taking four damage, uh, four, uh, turns of fatigue since the first turn that you activate the wheel, you're not, you're not drawing a card, you're not taking any damage, so it's just four fatigues that you have to avoid. So harp pretty much solos that wing condition extremely, extremely well. You just need other things to do onto the board and actually, uh, in, in order to keep yourself alive. Uh, but if you're not wanting to play wheel warlock, there are some other decks that aren't as... I guess meta greedy as this list can be because this is a very greedy deck needless to say an old face that is making its way back into the meta is sif mage sif mage is the easy counter to warrior and honestly is the sleeper uh counter to, de to, to demon hunter and the reason why is because of sleep skater if they play a card that is large attack and they can't immediately utilize it then you can easily just gain like 12 armor because if you're going to be freezing a six five then you gain you know six twice 
but this is just a very effective way of being able to stomp the uh, the demon hunters that don't think about what exactly you can do in order to counter them but that's kind of the problem with this deck this deck is all in on trying to stop the demon hunters by putting a double cryo putting in a frost bolt not only for damage but for freezing the face this deck is just trying to say f you to every single warrior and to every single demon hunter so it has to correct itself in order to be good against a demon hunter but the funny thing about these inclusions is that it also makes it somewhat decent against warrior 2 just because you have extra value you have extra treasures you, you can get potentially extra minions in order to try and get in the way of the rat always taking the sif but you still have plenty of uh, consistent draws with the wisdom of north ganon reverb for the uh for the sif potential plenty of random discoveries this deck just does one thing very well and that is to play for tempo suddenly gain a bunch of armor with artificer stall the game and then play sif when it is time to kill the opponent and i do apologize for that little thingy that just happened uh boop, 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 computer stuff uh, but yeah, someone hit rank one legend on the EU server with this deck. Uh, it's a very, very solid deck that has been the go-to to counter the warrior and the and the demon hunter since the uh, the nerfs have gone live. So maybe this might be the perfect version of the deck, but I just find it very, very intriguing that Aqua Archivist actually finds its way into this deck. I'm not really sure why we want to discount elementals outside of discounting the uh, the skater himself. Uh, but I mean, hey, being able to gain a bunch of armor for four mana instead of six mana does seem like a pretty impressive win. And this deck sometimes can struggle with hand space, so sometimes you just need a card to get rid of. So maybe that's the reason to put this in here. I have not tested this yet. I most likely will be testing this when I actually uh, give Sif Mage a chance. Uh, but if you're someone that loves the combo mage and loves the complexity that this deck can provide, then Sif Mage is a very good way of trying to counter the meta right now. And the last deck that we're going to talk about as the top five best archetypes in the game is going to be the weakest one on this list, but also I'm not showing you the best list right now. This is actually the list that I use in order to hit Legend, and I just wanted to showcase it because Jive Insect took me to Legend, baby. That's right, Conductivity and the Jive Insect became a legitimate deck all of a sudden, but the big question is, is Jive Insect better than the other deck that I'm going to be showcasing? But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and talk about what is what is going on right here. Because Nature Shaman actually could use Jive Insect as a legitimate way of being able to win the game. And the reason why this is the case is because if you play three Ragnaroses, that is already 24 damage. So all you really need to do with this deck is play the Nature cards like Crash of Thunder, pop-up book as well as lightning bolt to control the board so that way you can deal 30 damage extremely easily so the ragnaroses always go face now there's the other side of this uh, of this deck to where obviously you know against warrior warriors got armor warrior is hard to beat uh but this deck can beat warrior i went eight and one against warrior and the stats are on twitter so if you guys think i'm lying go ahead and check my twitter post talking about this deck i went eight and one against warrior because highlander warrior needs to draw all of the armor cards in order to be very good against this deck and if they don't draw well, then you can finally punish the Highlander deck. I, I love that the Highlander decks can be punished for bad draw, finally. But this deck does have ways of being able to deal exactly 69 damage. That is the highest that I have dealt with this deck. Uh, and I do have that game showcased on Twitter as well, in case you guys are like, oh, this guy's lying. This guy, there's no way this deck can deal 69 damage. Because guess what? I lied to you. It was actually 75, I think. I think I it was at 69 HP, and I dealt 5 over his HP. So regardless, check out the Twitter if you want that information. But I wanted to showcase this really, really goofy deck because Jazz Base helps discount the Jive Insect, very similar to how we played our Bioluminescence. And you can just play your entire nature combo, dealing a bunch of damage to the face, and then having an extra 24 on top of it so this is just a deck that is extremely funny i will have a deck guide coming out specifically with this archetype and with this list uh in the future uh but as of right now i wanted to showcase it because it's very very goofy and it does seem somewhat legitimate to the point where if you haven't noticed this entire deck is golden I made this deck golden. Maybe it wasn't a good decision with my dust, but I have all the cards now. I wanted this deck golden. So if you want to play Jive Insect and actually win, this might be a legitimate way of doing that. But if you want my opinion on what might be the best Nature Shaman deck in the game, I had so many people come into my stream telling me that this deck hit rank 1 Legend, but I also really don't like the people that told me this deck hit rank 1 Legend because they didn't give me a screenshot. Like, I, I, ha I, have to, I have to make this caveat where it's like, oh no, maybe this deck didn't hit rank 1 Legend, but the stats are going up not only on HS Replay, but they're going up on Donkey, and it is all centered around this list right here, so that's why I have to showcase it. It seems like a legitimate way of being able to play Nature Shaman, where it was essentially what the old list was, uh, the Tic Tac list with Thrall's Gift, but instead 
of uh, of having any top end and having like a very specific way of dealing 30, we have the potential of dealing even more now because of Photographer Fizzle. We are essentially trying to double the amount of damage that we can deal because of this card to where we, uh, we have the combo in our hand, we activate the snapshot, we still draw into the deck, and mostly this is for the Warrior matchup. This is just to make sure that there's no deck that can out armor us because if we can beat Warrior, then we can beat any deck whatsoever because dealing 30 is extremely easy for this deck but now we have the possibility of dealing even more than 30 potentially dealing above 70 damage but one thing i have to tell you before you play this deck on the combo turn you gotta go fast animations take a while for this deck and god forbid the rope is burning as you're playing all of your cards the last card you play is lightning reflexes you're waiting for all these animations to pop off before you even have the chance to discover the card next thing you know the rope is burnt out and now you don't have a chance of being able to play the lightning reflexes for the discover and you miss that last card you needed for lethal not only did that happen to me but that happened to tic tac while i saw him playing this deck and this is just going to be a deck that really forces you to understand the win condition and to pop it off quickly before you run out of time so how exactly does this deck win it wins by doing exactly what nature shaman does you draw you, you get the right cards you wait for the uh for the flash of lightning to actually pop off the combo the only difference between this deck and the nature shaman that we've seen before is now you have to worry about fizzle and drawing the snapshot in those particular matchups so you have more of a higher potential for better damage but the biggest thing about this deck is whether or not it can uh, survive against the rest of the meta and i definitely believe that nature shaman has ways of doing that especially now that we have the fizzle in the deck we can use the cards to play more for control like we can get rid of a lightning bolt if we need to kill a 3-3 we can get rid of a pop-up book in order to play taunts and try to sustain ourselves it's just very important to play this deck perfectly because a newer player will play this deck and will always focus on draws and focus on the combo you have to play this deck as like a pseudo control deck in some instances and that's why cards like elixir are great to not only give us healing but to give us extra resources so we can find more lightning reflexes like as you can tell i love nature shaman i think about this deck on so many different levels it's not just a simple draw and deal damage deck like a lot of people want to make it out to be but try Trust me, this deck is good. This deck is probably legit and is going to be the deck I play the most this season if I am trying to go for legitimate wins. And now we're going to be talking about the decks that are just on the cusp of being so good that they are top five. But unfortunately, the other decks that I showed you are just better. So if you want to climb the legend as quickly as possible, go ahead and play those decks. But if you want to hit legends still, but you don't want to play those decks, and these are a couple of decks that could definitely get you there. And I'm really sad to put Rainbow DK in this particular uh, part of the video, but unfortunately... This deck does falter to uh, to the Demon Hunter and the Warrior meta from time to time to where it can beat one or beat the other, but sometimes it has issues of beating both on the same day, depending on how exactly you tech out the deck. And what we are looking at right now is a specific version of the deck that is teched to beat Demon Hunter because Death Strike is very good going into the Shopper turn. You They summon a 6-5 you heal six and remove six it's, it's, a, it's a difference of 12 so that's a very big power in difference to where you have still lots of removal with cards like threads of despair the double death strike gives you a lot more sustainability we have double crusher because this is probably the best weapon in the, in the game right now it's healing and freezing like that's just really good and i just love that only rainbow can utilize this but the biggest issue with this card in particular is how easy it is to discover off of rune of darkness to where if you're not even playing rainbow dk if you're playing plague dk you still have a chance of finding the best weapon in the game and also can make it a 4-4. That is scary, to say the least. Uh, but this is the version of the deck that uh, I saw on Donkey a couple days ago in order to beat up on the, on the Demon Hunters. This deck actually has a pretty good game against them because we just have Curve, Freezing, and Healing. And the best part about this deck, actually, are two cards that I want to I highlight. Army of the Dead and Horsemen. These cards are just extremely good because Army of the Dead is essentially a way of building up a board while also utilizing your corpse spenders as well as, you know, maintaining tempo and trying to fight back for the board. This is just a super important card, especially when you compare it to crop rotation. If you crop rotation on turn three because you have to, then you automatically set up the Army of the Dead very, very easily. So that is one reason why this card is finding its way into every single uh, Death Knight deck. And the reason why Corpse Bride doesn't survive is because we need to go wider and develop a, be a better board that can do more immediately versus playing a taunt that's just going to get red carded by a Demon Hunter. So this is essentially turn five, summon a big taunt, and if they deal with the taunt, then you skip your turn. So that's why Army of the Dead is replacing Corpse Bride. 
But the reason why uh, the Horseman is actually very good is because in games where you do need to focus on getting your corpse count high enough, the discovering of undeads is very, very crucial in order to actually get those corpse benders, such as the Corpse Bride, for example. You have other cards that you can generate, so you just have all these uh, these more corpses that are being generated, as well as getting your corpse spenders. You're dealing three damage for two mana. That is very powerful. Do not sit on that. Because there are times where you could just play the Death Knight as a as a form of removal as you wait uh, as you wait out the game. If you can play this on turn six, I would highly recommend it. But the other way that you can actually utilize this card, because of all of the freezing that's going on in this meta is every now and again you might need to hold on to your horseman equip your weapon and then play the horseman to freeze your opponent so now you are the one freezing them instead of the other way around so there are some other ways of being able to utilize these cards that aren't just play horseman on six hope that you get the pumpkin as, as uh, quickly as possible this is the reason why i love rainbow dk because the variance in this deck massive it, it just varies massively so if you're wanting to play a deck that specifically beats up on demon hunter before it gets nerfed this might be the way of going about it but the other version of this deck that decides not to play the Death Strike is actually going all in on shuffling plagues into the deck in order to turn off Highlander decks. And the main reason why I didn't put this card into the deck originally is because I was like, you know, if I'm going to discover another card for plagues, I'll just discover the, the, the plague weapon from Runes of Darkness. That seems like a pretty good utilization of this card. However, Highlander Warrior has become very, very popular on the ladder to where it feels like we do need the hell yeah, we do need the down with the ship, because if you could just turn off the reno and turn off the brand then the deck is absolutely worthless we all know how bad brand uh a highlander warrior can be against plagues and now we have a way of actually playing plagues in rainbow a little bit more consistently to where we're playing the better deck and we're not just putting in a bunch of plague cards and hoping that we can turn off the highlander deck every single time so it's just like we have the option if it's there and we have the the deck doing what it loves to do generating tempo generating corpses and trying to build up a gigantic uh, ne uh, necrotic climactic explosion but the biggest issue with this deck is sometimes the warriors just have everything that they need and you need the way of being able to counter them. So hell yeah is core in this deck 100%. Whether or not you want to roam it down with the ships is completely up to you. It depends on what you're seeing at your Legend uh, MMR. But if you're seeing a lot of Highlander Warrior, you might want to play this version of the deck. But kind of like what I just said, the other version was really good against Demon Hunter. This version is very good against Highlander Warrior. It's really hard to build a deck that feels like it's very good against both because you have to cut out key cards in, uh, in particular matchups to make it better against the other matchup. So I would recommend if you want the best version of the deck, this is probably the way to go about it. But you're going to be sacrificing percents against certain matchups depending on the cards that you include in your deck. Deck, and that's something that I really like about Rainbow. It really does allow you to build your deck around the meta instead of just trying to focus on building up the best 30 for your own deck. You can use this deck to counter other decks, and that's why I love it. Next up, we have the best priest deck in the meta, and that is definitely Zerini Tempo combo miracle whatever the hell you want to call this deck this deck is extremely difficult to play i tried playing it myself and make the stupidest plays that you've ever seen in your life i don't even know what the zilliax is the zilliax is okay yeah plus one plus one and ticking module that should have been obvious because you want to make a big board and stick it and the biggest issue between this deck and hunter is that hunter does not have a, 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 a skip turn effect <laughs> that is the main reason why this deck is very good. Zerimi finally found a deck that actually supports it very well. Like, we all thought this card would be like an, oh man, we're automatically going to lose the turn going into the next turn. But this card, if anything, is more of a tempo tool that is trying to help bridge the gaps between turns instead of just trying to lethal all in one turn. So what exactly do I mean by this? Most of the time that people are playing Zerimi right now, they're playing it just for a big tempo swing and maybe they have like a, a burst combo with like thirsty drifters that they can do but if you could play like zarimi into thirsty drifters and then you have like leroy and the zilliax that is a lot of damage but i don't think that's enough to actually otk somebody so the way that people have been playing this deck is that they use zarimi as like a big tempo push deal a lot of damage and then try to end the game going into the turn after the next with like a leroy combo or something like that that's how this deck has usually been played because the biggest issue with this deck is that if you don't have the tempo at the very beginning of the game or like by turn four, 
you are just gonna die so you better hope that if you haven't taken over tempo you better have a very good crimson clergy tempo turn with cards like uh, funnel cake dream boat makes its way into the deck because it's more synergy for the clergy but it also gives you another way of being able to generate a big minion out of nowhere and you just have more synergy with more minions that you have onto the field and this deck has a lot of one drops that it can play in the early turns which is why pip finds its way into this deck very very good card to give you extra funnel cakes glacial shards or even extra dragons this deck is very very difficult and i wish i had like legitimate advice or mulligan advice because this deck is taking over the lower ranks uh and might actually become the best deck in the game after tempo demon hunter gets nerfed but the biggest issue with this deck is that it feels like you can stop it very easily unlike other tempo demon hunter decks now granted when this deck pops up by turn three and it has zilliax playable it's just, uh, it's just something that happens. But this deck really does have a lot of different ways of being able to see play. If you want to stream that's very good with this, I'd recommend Makaya Time. He's played so much of this deck and has gaslighted me into putting it into the video. So you can go ahead and blame Makaya for that, especially if you're a regular on the Twitch stream. But yeah, Zarini Priest, Dragons. Dragons are very good in this meta, but this deck is not that easy to pilot. So before you just start immediately crafting this deck, watch a couple of games with it watch how this deck is played because maybe this deck is something that you can learn but trust me the, the the learning curve of this deck is a little bit steep next up we have the the hunter deck like last time i didn't put this in the video someone who is like well doesn't it make sense to play this deck because it's good to legend yeah it's good to legend but the moment that you hit legend i feel like this deck falls off so freaking hard it's not even funny which is why i'm not going to talk that much about it this is just a very straightforward simple deck to where you are going to destroy unoptimized uh archetypes at your uh at your lower mmr brackets but i really do believe the only reason why this deck has such a high win rate at lower mmrs is because of the bots that you will definitely be seeing on your ladder grind that's why i don't trust this deck like whenever i see a deck that does very well on its way to legend and then completely tapers off when it hits legend that tells me one of two things one, the deck is good against people that aren't that experienced into the, uh, into the deck. Or two, this deck is so easy that people understand how it gets uh how it uh, how it wins but then top legend players understand how it loses so that's really the big thing with hunter right now it feels like the noob slayer because it destroys the bots and it destroys the unoptimized decks that you will see on your grind to like diamond but the moment that you hit diamond that diamond to, le uh, to legend grind is gonna feel like you've kind of jumped up the difficulty just a little bit especially when you go to legend with this deck it feels like it's very difficult to do well uh in, in legend with this deck but i really don't think i need to talk about it but just in case you play a bunch of token minions zilliax is the same as the priest deck from the previous uh the previous deck and yeah you just you, you summon minions you go face I, I i thought i had more to say about this deck but it turns out it's just another simple unga bunga hunter deck Next up is a deck that I wish I had more data on, but it seems that top legend players are starting to go back to this deck. And it's kind of funny because it's very similar to the old list that we were playing in the previous meta because I don't think anything from Sludgelock actually rotated out. All the cards that we're seeing play in the previous meta are seeing play in this particular meta as well, except for the Doom Guard. The Doom Guard is really the only real change to this deck, and it's just another charge card in order to help end the game. So it does make sense, and if you do have Symphony of Creation, or Symphony of Sins, given this plus six, plus six, then that is just a five mana deal 11. That seems pretty good. I don't really know why we're not seeing more uh, more of this deck. At least, I don't understand why I'm not seeing it at Top Legend. But the numbers of this deck are starting to increase very, very rapidly. I'm not sure what this deck beats, so the only reason I'm showcasing it is because I've seen it emerge. But I'm not seeing it at my particular MMR. Maybe this is a better deck to grind to Legend, and then maybe it starts falling off when you actually are in Legend. But I don't know. I feel like I had to showcase this deck because it survived, it, it survived an entire rotation, it didn't see play at the beginning because everyone was trying to make Wheel Warlock into a deck. And now, now that Wheel Warlock is starting to die out and hype a little bit, people just want to win games and they want to play for tempo. And that's exactly what this deck does. So Sludge Warlock, nothing's really changed from this deck outside of the Doom Guard. But if you want a different way of being able to climb that might be a little bit unexpected, then you can go ahead and bring back the Sins of the Past. And well, with Symphony of Sins, this deck always just is going to feel a little bit evil. And man, do I just, I hate looking at this deck. I don't know about you guys, but I hate hate looking at slush warlock and next up we have two more decks that i would recommend if you're trying to play some fun stuff to legend because this is an actual deck that is well a scam and it has been optimized and i'm gonna have to play this deck now because i've played it a little bit but i had some clips with this deck that just were not there and honestly wouldn't sell you on the power of this deck so i'm gonna do you guys a favor 
re, re, we will go again, we'll play this deck as it is, and as of right now, this is the only real way of playing Rogue. It, it's kind of sad that Rogue is completely limited to like three different scam decks right now that all kind of do the same thing. But the, the, the reason why this deck is probably the one that uh, emerges most powerful is because it is really hard to deal with a Stealth Zilliax that keeps gaining attack every single turn. And the fact that you can just re-stealth it, this deck just feels extremely unfair when you pop it off. The whole power of this deck is to play Frequency Oscillator as early as you can in the early game, so that way you can potentially coin out the Zilliax by turn 3 or play him for 4 mana. Then onto the next turn, he will automatically go to 4 attack, and if you play any of the cards that magnetize onto him, then you are just going to create a gigantic Zilliax that your opponent has absolutely no business with dealing with. And the worst part about it is that it has Reborn, so even if they do kill it, they have to kill it a second time with an AoE, so there are, there are legitimate ways that this deck can just survive 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 and then just kill you now it's a very it's a very linear deck if it doesn't draw the zilliax it doesn't really feel like it has a lot of ways of being able to win which is why you have cards like dig for treasure which specifically draws a minion you have gear shift in order to remulligan your your cards essentially fan of knives maybe should be a two of in this particular deck over dart throw i am not a fan of dart throw but this is the deck that people are playing so I can't really say anything about it, but I believe Dart Throw for second and Phantom Knives may be a little bit better. But if you think about it, this is also pretty good into the mirror. So I don't I don't know. Maybe maybe this does find a way into the deck, and it is just another way of cheating out the Zilliax. But from what I can from where I'm sitting, this looks like the 30th card. Uh but yeah. This deck is very, very simple. You've also got Pit Stop in order to find the Zilliax. You have lots of ways of being able to tutor this card in particular. But scam decks are scam decks, and if you don't draw the scam card, then you're not going to scam the win. So play this deck uh, if you want to play Rogue, but do be aware that Rogue is in a very precarious spot right now to where it either scams or it does absolutely nothing, and honestly, that just doesn't spark enjoyment for me in particular. And the last quote-unquote real deck that we're going to talk about is actually a Druid archetype that I managed to go 5-5 five and five with, and that is actually impressive. Like, the fact that a Druid deck didn't go below 50% that is automatically telling you that this deck has potential of being good and I wish I could craft this deck golden because I, I have the golden Elonius, I have the golden Phi, I have the golden Zilliax. All I need are a little bit, I just need three more cards golden and this entire deck is good. Uh, but the reason why I'd actually recommend this deck is because this feels like a tempo druid that can actually survive uh, into the late game. So the whole point of this deck is to play your dragons for tempo, you play your Splish Splash Whelp, you can play Des uh, Desert uh, Nest Matron and Spine Tail in order to get that classic dragon swing in tempo. Uh, but this deck is, does not have dragon golems. This is not a deck that is just trying to vomit stats throughout the entirety of the game. This is a deck that is trying to fight for tempo, so that way you can do like a mini Alonius combo. You're not trying to deal 30 damage, but I believe it is possible technically possible to deal 30 damage with this deck but i am not smart enough with owl druid in order to really suggest how exactly you do that but the ways that i have done this combo before is that i have my my doll houses on the field i have the one mana drakes i activate uh the spell damage in order to make the vial cost like six i can then play the owl for one and if you have extra vials and swipes in hand i know it's a lot of mana there's a lot of mana that has to fly around with this kind of deck in order to make it work if you have the mana, then you could potentially do like a gigantic burst combo, but that's not how this deck is trying to perform. You are trying to deal like a combo of like 15 to 20, so that way your minions can actually pressure and you can try to build up some sort of tempo and deal damage as the game goes on. And this deck actually has ways of being able to play Swipe as like a removal card, where you can play it with Dollhouse, and it's actually pretty decent into Demon Hunter if they don't high roll mag. Because if you play a shopper, you can just kill it immediately. And if, the, if they play the one ones, then you can kill the one ones that follow it. Not saying this is the, the end all be all the Demon Hunter. But when I went up against Demon Hunter, the matchup was not as bad as I thought unless Mag came down. So this deck has, you know, Flower Child to draw the Owl and the Fi very, very consistently. The Fi can be drawn from the... Uh, from the uh, the take to the skies so hopefully summon flower child will always hit your owl and your zilliax so you can play them very very cheap zilliax is a copy 
uh, summon a copy and the perfect module so that way you have some sustain because you do need some sustain in this deck and when you have flower child being able to cheat this out for eight mana it does feel very good to potentially coin it out if you have that uh, that capability but we do have cards with ramp potential with like Malfurion's gift obviously with the splish splash whelp so Zilliax being eight mana is honestly kind of a big deal to give you that that very key turn you need to survive uh, but Phi is another good card to help survive this deck has a lot of game, and I've been talking about this deck in particular uh, a lot to right. Um, and I've been talking about these specific cards, uh, and I've been talking a lot. Of, uh, and I have been talking a lot about specifics with this deck, but one specific that I really got to showcase is the potential of Dragon Tails. So you can get two dragons that cost more than five, but you are most likely going to do, go for short stories to where you get two dragons that cost five or less. Now, what dragon do we want? We want Zarimi. That's the only reason we do this. We don't really have like a, a lot of ways of being able to make the more expensive dragons actually useful because we're trying to be a tempo deck. We're trying to play our cards and we're trying to pressure onto the board. But if you get Zarimi, then you might have the potential of doing some really goofy things with Owl. But that's the main reason why this is in here. Maybe this gets cut, but it's really good to have this card for extra dragon consistency because if you don't have like a Whelp in hand or something, but you do have a Nest Matron or a Drake, then dragons got to come from somewhere. So that's the main reason why this is in the deck, but a huge shout out to Banterface for coming up with this archetype. I'd highly recommend it if you're looking for an interesting, fun way of playing Druid that doesn't automatically, you know, die because you don't draw the hero power cards. Uh, but yeah, this feels like the best Druid deck that I've seen so far, and I had to showcase it because I think this might be a fun way of actually playing everyone's least favorite class right now. Next up are just going to be fun decks that I'm going to showcase and I'm going to try and get through these very quickly because I'm already almost hitting an hour here and I don't want this video to take too long. So this is a Tic Tac special Tendy Rogue. Nothing really more to say here. The whole point of the deck is to play as many Tendies as possible, but the reason why the deck might have some real legitimate game is because you have Sonya being able to double up the Tendies, which is essentially like Highlander Warrior. You can play five mana of Tendies and hopefully get... 10 mana spells immediately going but the biggest issue with this is that the tendies need to a not kill themselves b they can't kill the sonia so yeah there's a little bit of a problem with that in particular but you've got zola you've got bounce around holy crap what bounce around finding its way into the deck and if you think about it it does work with sonia so if you can like play tendies uh, we don't have a prep in the deck, so apparently we can't prep out the bounce around. Never mind, dude. I don't. I have no idea what's going on here. Tic Tac, what are we doing? How is it that prep does not find its way into this deck? I feel like Brewmaster maybe should go away, but it's like, I don't know, dude. Like, I don't know if we need all three of the bouncer cards to make this work, but this is a deck that only re legitimately works with Tendies. So give this a uh, give this a try if you want to try Tendy Rogue. Maybe I try this in the future. But oh my god, the more I look at this deck, the more unappealing it becomes. <laughs> Next up, I have a version of Pain Warlock that I want to share with you guys. But this is not my version of the deck. I have my version that I will be sharing after I talk about this. But the main sauce, the main cook that I want to talk about is actually Sketchy Artist. Now, why would Sketchy Artist be good in this particular deck? What shadow cards in the deck? Oh, we don't play Reverb. What shadow cards aren't reverb? Oh, wait a minute. It's monstrous form, or as I like to call it, monstrous cock. And guess what? You're definitely going to be giving your minion a very monstrous cock indeed. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Really hard to say that. You're going to be giving your minion a lot of stats because you have this giving plus six plus six as a legitimate win condition if uh, you have more than five mana. So that just seems like a legitimate way of being able to burst your opponent. But one thing that I really like about the idea of this deck, I don't like Tentacle, for example. I really want to fit a reverb in here. And the main reason why I want to fit the reverb is because imagine Leroy into double monstrous form into reverb. That is 12, 24 burst combo out of nowhere. And this deck is just trying to deal damage throughout every single turn to where, yeah, maybe going for like a 10 mana combo is not the way to go. But I also feel like reverb could just be a great way of being able to destroy key minions from your opponent. But it does make the consistency a little less uh, there. This is a deck that I got from Dwizzy. Uh, gotta give him a quick shout out because he's been sending me a lot of really interesting decks. And this is probably the most interesting one that he sent me. This deck also runs the uh, the the power module with the with the haywire module and the zilliax to try and just make as much stats as possible you don't care about dealing damage to yourself because it's what you want to do to make cards like horror work however one thing that is very sad to admit 
Giant does not find its way into this deck. I am so sorry. I know I can I, I wanted this card to be good And this would be the one deck where it would definitely go in right? Well, the biggest issue with this deck is that it has a decent amount of healing and there are either times where your giant is sitting in hand not doing anything or you play it and it doesn't accomplish anything. So it's like the, the thing that really sucks about giant is when you have to make the healing turn and you don't have the mana to throw him out. So he's just another dead card. So that's the real issue with this particular deck. But we do have Malefic Rook. Malefic Rook is a very useful tool in order to just play as early as possible. And in all honesty, there might be a legitimate reason to to actually run Demonic Studies as another shadow card in this deck. So that way we get more value from the sketch artist. And if we play these cards immediately, we can potentially play a one mana Rook. So I think this deck is not optimized 100% needless to say. But here's my version of the deck that I made before seeing this list. And this is the version that I settled on, and honestly, I guess I was a little bit wrong. I think I did take us uh, a little bit of inspiration from the other list, because these lists are very, very similar. I took out the Tentacle card because I didn't think it was that good, and I put in Frequency Oscillators in order to try and make the Zilliacs a little bit better. I've also got the Molten Giants in this deck, and one Reverb. So I don't know. When I made this deck, it, feels, it, it felt like it was very, very good. Like, this is one of those lists where you look at it, and it's like, wow, this is really powerful. How is this not meta-relevant? Well, play the deck for a little bit and you'll quickly find out. This deck deals so much damage and does have quick ways that it can initiate onto the board. But if you have almost any of your boards removed, it is really hard to make a comeback in this deck. Like, that's why I love the idea of the Reno plus Reverb to try and give us, like, extra consistency on just getting that last bit of damage that we need. However, it just feels like this deck is just not going to be able to keep up with Tempo Demon Hunter because it deals damage to itself way too much. It does not have enough healing. Unfortunately, cards like Spellstone don't exactly work very well because I, I remember this working with the hero power, but... It turns out I was wrong. This just worked with Cobalt Librarian. You can't you can't utilize this with your hero power because your hero power is not a card that is dealing damage. It is a hero power that is dealing damage. So unfortunately, Spellstone just doesn't find its way into this deck because we don't have the best one drop that Warlock ever was given. So if you want to play some Pain Warlock, hopefully I've sold you on how fun the archetype is. But as, as far as how good it actually is, it might need a balance change before this deck becomes meta relevant. Next up, we've got the John Bray special. I have played zero games of this deck. I am just gonna tell you guys to play it and just trust John Bray, but the reason why I definitely will be playing this deck soon, I gotta utilize my signature Aviana, right? The best signature card to get from this expansion. I always, my signature cards are always the cards I do not want. I have signature Pip, I have signature Rodden, I have this signature card, I technically have signature Demon Hunter, uh, Highlander Demon Hunter cards, Kurtris, but I don't want to play Demon Hunter, so it's like Hearthstone keeps throwing signature cards my way, and I legitimately don't want them. But regardless, Aviana finally fi finds his way into a deck, and it does not look that good. There is uh, Take to the Skies and Dragon Tails and Innervate, as well as a Magatha in the deck. And if you know my opinion on Magatha, you know this card is just going to draw two cards and give three cards to your opponent every single time. But Gaslight Gatekeeper, as well as Giant and Druid to try and give ourselves a little bit of a scam. We have the Summer Flower Child to cheat out the Dragon Golems, the Zilliacs, and the Fi in order to try and give us a little bit of sustainability. If Flower Child hits the Playhouse Giant, you didn't get this deck from me. This is a John Bray special, but this is like probably the only way that I have seen any legitimate claims come from Sky Mother Aviana. So if you are stuck with this card like I am, and you want some way of trying to be able to play it, this might be the only option you have until we get a mini set. And continuing down the road of disappointing druid decks, well, Hero Power Druid is looking like an archetype that is an absolute fart in the wind. And honestly... I don't see how this archetype can get better. The biggest problem that we have right now is that if you're going to play a hero power deck, you can't just be focused only on doing the hero power. So like just a car warrior, for example, feels like a great way of being able to focus on the hero power. Doing everything with like groovy cat and with free spirit like this was an idea that people are trying to utilize to beat demon hunter and i will admit I did test this against demon hunter and when you had free spirit on the first couple of turns. 
it did feel like you had a, 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 a real chance of stopping Demon Hunters because you could hear a power for armor every single turn. And if you can like double it up, then you could probably get your health total to like above 40 very easily. The biggest issue with this deck is the consistency, my guy. It's the consistency. It is so giga terrible. You, like you want to have this card in your mulligan, but this is not a good card to have in your mulligan because you want to play cards like Free Spirit. You want to play the Groovy Cat. You want to play the Gold Panner. I have no idea exactly what the mulligan of this deck is because you could theoretically keep almost every single card in here that isn't single on buddy or pixie. Like it's it's just or obviously you don't keep hearth, you don't keep swipe, but it's like the rest of this deck. You could keep dollhouse, you could keep the gift, you could keep the stone if you really want to remove things. You always keep this, you could keep this, you could keep that. Like there are so many cards you could keep because of this card. There are so many cards that you can keep because this deck just has a low curve, but the problem with this deck is that it just doesn't do anything for the first couple of turns you're building up this win condition. So Hero Power Druid is probably the worst archetype in the game right now that isn't Pirate Rogue, which I don't know why Pirate Rogue came to my, my brain, but everyone thought Pirate Rogue would be busted, and it turns out it was a wet fart just like this deck. So if you want to play a fun deck against your friends, I'd highly recommend this, but do not play this deck on ladder. You will get slaughtered and it won't even be fun to try and pretend that you have a chance. Like if you cue this deck into somebody, you are giving them free wins. Do not play this deck on ladder. And the last two archetypes that I want to talk about are going to be control shaman decks. Now I know control shaman, shamans don't have armor. Why on earth would I want to play control shaman? Well, this deck actually has a surprising amount of uh, healing, and this was a deck that uh, was coming around when people were trying to solely beat Demon Hunter during the first couple of days, and this was a deck that actually had a pretty good win rate against Demon Hunter. I'm not saying this is the end-all, be-all for that matchup, but if you're wanting to play a pretty interesting Shaman deck that is going to catch a lot of people off guard, then this is going to be the way to go about it, because Golgoneth, uh, Shutterblock, really don't find their way into a lot of decks anymore like yeah golgoneth does find its way into nature shaman but there are nature shamans that are cutting out this card like high cost mana uh, high mana cost shaman spells and shaman cards are just in a very unplayable position right now to where even Shutterblock, a card that i thought would be insanely good is unfortunately kind of held back right now not because the battle cries aren't that good but because it's just so slow and the biggest issue with Shutterblock is honestly hand space reasons like if you put this into a deck that just has a bunch of cards that are seven mana or more, it is really hard to get that triple uh, battle cry value because most battle cries for shaman are adding cards to your hand, discovering cards from your deck. There's really not a lot of battle cries that you can utilize that doesn't damage the hero. With the it just it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. I just really don't know how else to describe this card. It just does not work. However, one thing that I do need to point out about this deck, and I will be uh, posting a video talking about this list in particular, is ETC and a Tony King of Piracy. Uh, do not be confused. I thought for uh, at first this would work uh, with Shutterblock, but you replace your deck three times. This is not a Benedictus to where it actually adds the cards into your deck, so you can't outvalue your opponent that way. But I just thought this card was very, very intriguing because I believe I went up against a Warrior, if I remember correctly. Played this card and actually was able to maintain the game for the rest of it. And it was it was just really, really goofy to actually make use of Tony in 2024. Uh, but yeah, this deck is Omega Fun. I really don't know the best ways of being able to pilot it outside of just denying your opponent, healing when you can, and then like building up tempo when you have cards like Ignis Weapon, for example. But this deck is just trying to do what Control Warrior does, but a little bit worse because healing is just not armor. And the last deck that I want to put on this list, I can't remember if I put it on my previous top five deck list video. So if this was on my previous list, I do apologize. But the reason why we're putting this in the list is because there is one synergy in particular that I want to point out. Marut is probably the worst Highlander card that has ever been made, but I think I know the reason why they made this card so underwhelming. Because in Shaman in particular, you can play Shutterblock, realize how greedy this is, I understand how greedy this is, just work with me here for a second. If you play Shutterblock into Marut, you can then have three extra elementals onto your side of the field. That's just cool, right? Now, whether or not that's going to be good, whether or not it's actually going to win the game. Oh, these are these are all lame questions that you're asking for the for the end of this video talking about the meme decks. Why would you ever have these kind of comments, guys? Regardless, this deck just isn't that good. Highlander, Shaman, and honestly, Highlander decks in general are really not performing right now. The only good Highlander deck is Warrior. 
And that's because warrior cards are so overtuned. You're not playing Highlander Warrior because Highlander Warrior and Bran are so good. You're playing Highlander Warrior because it survives, it has win conditions, and it has ways of being able to turn off the game. Unfortunately for the Shaman deck, it's just tempo, 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 tempo. It does not have a actual way of ending the game, but that is exactly why the person, uh, Quark, Quark actually made this deck. He put Kalamos in here because Kalamos is a way of getting, uh, getting around the shutter block caveat of not being able to deal damage to the hero because the battle cry has to deal the damage in order for the damage to be cut to zero. The biggest, uh, the difference between Kalamos is that Kalamos is casting a spell three times. The spell deals three damage, not the battle cry. So this would work if you could pop it off. It is theoretically an 18 damage burst combo, but unfortunately it is just such a slow setup to where it's like you have to play an elemental the previous turn. So the only real way of being able to do this is to play an elemental after you played your shutter block. So that way you can one mana shutter block into the, into the, the Kalamos and win. But then again, you still have to play an elemental that turn before and this deck just has so many specific setups that are really, really cool and look awesome. But this deck just has so much tempo to where it's just not going to survive in order to get to that, that point in the game. Like it has tempo, but it doesn't have survivability. It has baking soda volcano. It has, I think another one in here. Nope. It's got Yogg, Viper and Dirty Rat in the ETC. It's a very interesting deck, but unfortunately Highlander decks are kind of copium right now if you're not playing Warrior. Oh boy, but that is a lot of decks and a lot of things to talk about. But one last thing that I want to end this video uh, talking about is honestly one thing I'm very disappointed of in this expansion. The power differences and the uh, the, the differences between the good decks and, and the bad decks is really bad right now. And this is kind of common for like a, a new rotation to where we're either going to have a problem with lethality or we're going to have a problem with like some archetypes having cards carry them from the previous expansions while other archetypes lost other cards that carried them. Like for example, Miracle Rogue with the location. Uh, that's probably why Rogue is not doing so hot right now. Same thing with Druid losing Nourish. We are in a very awkward spot where the good decks are very good and the bad decks are bad. Kind of like what I was talking about with that 5% uh, win rate difference between uh, number five and number six on HS replay, where it was like 50 to like 45, almost 46. Like, how exactly are we supposed to play these other archetypes when they are just so bad? Druid might need to get buffed. Uh, Shaman might need a buff that isn't in nature Shaman levels. And honestly, Rogue is just sitting in a very weird spot where it's like, if the mini set does not properly support these really bad archetypes right now, then like Pirate Rogue, for example, Pirate Rogue absolutely is going to be unplayable until they do something with it and if if this continues to wear into the mini set pyro rogue doesn't get anything then this expansion didn't matter for rogue and that's kind of my worry is that we all got toys from Wizbang's workshop but some people got an ipad for christmas while some people got a yo-yo that's just the best way that I can describe it. There is one thing that's going to be definitely better, and you want to be that kid with an iPad, unless you just really like yo-yos. But in any case, if you made it to the end of this video, uh, say I made it to the end of the video and I love you, Clark Hellscream. Or say something along those lines. I don't I don't, I don't, don't care. I'm just happy that you guys made it to the end of the video and you're not just copying the deck code. So if you're seeing this right now, you are the true heart Clark Hellscream fan. And I got to let you guys know because there are a lot of people that just take the codes. But regardless, I like doing these videos. I like doing this because it's my homework. I like talking about Hearthstone metas and I like telling you guys what to play. That's not only good, but it also can be fun. Make sure to play Hearthstone for fun because we all need some more fun in our lives. But thank you so much for making it to the end of this very, very long top five video. And we'll see you for the next one.